So our first question of the evening comes from Mad in Madison Heights. Mm -hmm. And Mad writes in and says, I was buying a house from an estate and I have waited for months for the seller to get permission from the court to sell the property. Now, three days before the closing date, the executor of the estate says they are now selling it to one of the former owner's sons. Something is not right. And what are my rights as the buyer? From Mad in Madison Heights. Yeah, well, first of all, you know, purchasing a property through an estate or through probate uh, can be, you know, take a, take a while. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And just because we have a purchase offer doesn't mean that it's going to be approved. Now, what that means, first of all, is the personal representative actually has to have authority from the court to sell a piece of property. Um, I'd like to see, as you know, I always ask, I'd like to see the purchase agreement because it's not that something's not right. It's just that we don't know what really happened. Okay. Right. And so perhaps, and I'm just speculating, and I, that's why I like to see documents. Perhaps that purchase offer was too low. And perhaps uh, maybe the heirs of the estate went to the personal representative and said, you could do better. And then they went to the judge and the judge basically is gonna take the recommendation, usually for the higher price, and also um, is going to uh, defer to let's say family members if they're the ones who are getting the property. So somewhere in that transaction, I believe what probably happened is that the buyer either did not have uh, a really ironclad contract. It may have been subject to certain conditions. We really don't know. And so it probably was not a very uh, firm contract or, or it didn't offer the right amount. There's something missing. I'd have to see the agreement. Now, the, you know, I don't want to go down the slippery slope. We usually do because, um, you know, one question begets another. But here's the thing. Um, when you're dealing with such an expensive purchase, I mean, homes are the most expensive asset that most people purchase. I don't know why people would rely on just a realtor or a real estate agent for the transaction. A real estate agent or, or, or um, a realtor is just going to get the transaction, uh, the actual cadence of the transaction, the process taken care of. But a, a real estate agent is not an attorney. And so if you're going in front of a judge, and you're trying to secure a piece of property, where was the, you know, where is this person's attorney in, the, in this transaction? Perhaps they should have had one. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of questions here, but I, I hate to leave it completely to, oh, I gotta see the documents. I Usually what happens, Blair, is that when people go to buy a property through probate, they're usually lowballing the property value, mm -hmm. right? And I really do believe, you know, again, speculation that the heirs probably said that they could do better. And so perhaps there was a contingency clause in that agreement. That's it. Okay. So even if there was a signed, if there were a signed purchase agreement um, in these types of cases, the heirs, the heirs do have the right to veto that if someone within the estate accepted? Not necessarily. The personal representative has the right, number one. Okay. And number two, you know, here, here's the other thing that could be confusing for some people, and that is, you know, perhaps this, the, this person in Madison Heights was actually buying the property from the decedent, and then they died, mm. and then they, they wanted to be honored. Well, I mean, there's so many different things, like, is there language in the agreement that says that this contract actually binds the successors and the assigns of the seller? Mm -hmm. You see, so we don't know. That's why when you go to purchase a property, any property, you should really go and have a real estate attorney review your document, whether it's a probate matter or not. There's too many, too many issues to, or too many variables. I sure. can't really speak so for illustrative purposes, just to show you that there's just too many variables. That's it. You know, I can't answer the question directly. Gotcha. So Mad in Madison Heights, it's, it is too open-ended. We need to see your document. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. So for those of you who are watching, David and I sit down and we plow through a list of questions and then 
he breaks them up individually and puts them on in chunks for you on YouTube. So if for some reason you are not watching this video on YouTube, go to David's YouTube channel, just type, type in the search engine, proven resource or David Sobel and his whole channel will pop up with tons of resources, tons of other questions, comments, concerns from um, viewers just like you, all sorts of different answers to questions yeah. regarding real estate, finance, contracts, probate, et cetera. Like David says, if it touches real estate, you guys handle it, right? Right. All right. So David, if the, if the viewer at home wants to reach out to you and get their own questions answered directly, personally, how can they reach out to you in your office? Just 888-789-1715 is the easiest way to get in touch with us. You can go online again to provenresource.com. We have a scheduling page. We have the pop-ups to make appointments there, but we really prefer just call in. It's the easiest sure, way to, sure. to figure out, you know, how we can help you. And, uh, and that's about it. Um, I really appreciate the time, Blair. Thank sure. You. Yeah, it was oh, we good, appreciate good session. yours as well. Thank all right. You. Thank you, David. And thank you okay. to all of you who are watching and we will see you on the next video.